welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Teams haven't met since 09. First time the Jets have been here since 2005. Story in New York all week around the Jets. The four turnover performance by Geno Smith in the loss to Tennessee last week. Lisa Salters had the rookie deal with his worst start as a pro. Well, Mike, Geno Smith felt so badly about his performance last week that after the game he went up to each member on defense individually and personally apologized. He told me, I know it's a team game, but our team prides itself on defense, and I put them in tough situations. I wanted them to know that I'm aware of my mistakes and I will correct them. I asked Antonio Cromartie how players received that apology, and Cromartie said for him as a young guy to put it on his shoulders, I respect him for it. Cromartie said he told Smith, hey, we got your back, and it's our job as a defense when you make mistakes, we got to make sure we get you the ball back. We understand that we have a young quarterback, Cromartie said, but we trust in him, and we've seen his game just get better. Mike? Well, we'll see how Geno Smith responds against this Falcon defense tonight, and we'll wait a moment for that as Atlanta has won the toss, and we'll receive. So, Matty Ice, Matt Ryan will be on the field first. Nick Folk will uh, kick it off here for the Jets. We have the victories over Tampa Bay and Buffalo to start the season. And back deep to receive. It's Jaquiz Rogers for the Falcons. Final line of week five in the season to be written with the Jets and the Falcons. And off we go from Atlanta. And that bouncer will go through the end zone, and it's a touchback, as it has been a dozen times before on full kickoffs. So Ryan comes out with this group. Steven Jackson's still out with the injury, so we'll see Rodgers is one of the running backs. Three receivers, Tony Gonzalez going for a catch in 200 straight games. And, John, when we say those receivers, Julio Jones, three straight 100-yard performances. 33 catches. They need more from Roddy White on the other side. We have to keep an eye on White's ankle. He suffered throughout the first month of the season, but they need to take pressure off of Julio Jones. Express, express, express. Opening drive from the 20, and it's Rodgers up the middle. This is a stout Jet defensive front. Demario Davis helping lead the charge. Only a gain of a yard. Jets defense, some newer names for those of you who haven't watched the Jets. Muhammad Wilkerson. John has him as the Gruden grinder tonight. You love what this defensive player does up front. I really do. He's unselfish. He keeps his linebackers clean. And when they get you behind in the down and distance, Muhammad Wilkerson leads the Jets in sex. First round pick this year, cornerback Dean Milliner out again with his hamstring injury. Ryan's first pass is complete to Patrick DeMarco. And the tight end who played at South Carolina a few years ago gets the first down. Seven new starters on this Jets defense. And you're going to see the fullback just leak into the flat, and they don't cover them. There's been a number of blown coverages this year in the Jets secondary, and a lot of it has to do with seven new starters. DeMarco's on the practice squad, brought up a few weeks ago when Brady Ewing got hurt. In the 34, it is Rodgers squeezing through the hole for a half dozen. To the 40-yard line. John, so much of the thought this year with this team was Steven Jackson comes over from the Rams, 10,000 yard back, but he's missing his third game with a hamstring injury. So it's Jaquiz Rogers and Jason Snelling carrying the load. Well, you're missing a great runner, a great receiver, and a great every down threat. That's saying a lot. Hard to replace a top flight player. Express, express. Let him go. Second and three, Ryan. Has some time and has Gonzalez. It's a first down and it is 200 consecutive games with a catch for Tony Gonzalez. You know, when you throw the ball in the middle of the field, you like to throw it to an, a reliable Hall of Fame tight end. But Tony Gonzalez does a great job coming back to the quarterback and securing the catch in a crowd. Nobody does it better. Only the second man in the history of the NFL to have a catch in 200 or more straight games. Saw Jerry Rice was the other one, and the run by Rodgers. Into Jets territory, Jawan Landry pulls him down after a game seven. And David Harris, the middle linebacker of the Jets, warned us last night. He said, I don't like this no-huddle offense that the Falcons run. They can run the ball. They can throw the ball. Matt Ryan has an assortment of plays that he can get to. 
but it really taxes the communication of these Jets. Ryan saw 37, Jaquan Jarrett sneaking in for a potential blitz. So he adjusts the play, and Rodgers is erased by the man John pointed out at the top, Muhammad Wilkerson. I look for comparisons. He reminds me of a young Richard Seymour, Seymour the ex-New England Patriot, but he just beat Blaylock with an inside move. And how about that wingspan? Muhammad Wilkerson is going to be a superstar defensive lineman in this league. I picked the right grinder. <laughs> Jets took him towards the end of the first round. He played at Temple. Warren number nine at Temple. Lined up in a variety of places. And he will do that in Rex Ryan's defense. Jason Snelling the back on third and five. He protects Ryan whose pass is almost intercepted. Darren Walls who used to be a Falcon looked like he might have had his hands on a potential pick six. Those are the plays the Jets have to make to win this football game. They play a little zone coverage and they trap Tony Gonzalez with Demario Davis inside and Walls on the outside. This ball hits Walls right in the hands. And as I said earlier, Mike, the Jets have not generated a turnover from this defense in three weeks. Critical drop. Matt Bosher is off to a very good season as the puncher. For the Falcons, he gets it blocked. It is blocked by Antonio Allen. And then picked up, and the Falcons throw it to Snelling. He's down at the 45-yard line. That's one he way well to improve. shy of the first down. A 13-yard shy of the first down. Excuse me, Mike. That's one way to improve field position. If you can't get a turnover from your defense, do it in special teams. Right off your right side, Antonio Allen knifes across the face of Shan Schillinger for the easy block. And they set their rookie quarterback up with great field position. And, John, that play was completely legal. Nobody downfield had the ability to pass it and throw it. Now, Mike Black, who's our spotter in the booth, was a kicker at Boise State. He always watches the snap time. That was a good get-off time for the punter. But a great play by Allen. And the special teams of the Jets giving New York good field position. The rookie from West Virginia, Geno Smith, takes over at the Falcon 44. Jets are going to show you a lot of formations here tonight. Bilal Powell, who is their leading rusher this year, gains two and a half yards tackled by Thomas Deku. See some of the rookies like Smith, the fullback, Bohannon, and Brian Winters, John, who's only had one snap in the NFL, gets his first start as Vladimir Dukas is benched. And you're going to see a lot of different formations. The Jets have five running backs, five wide receivers, and three tight ends active tonight. That's uncommon for Rex Ryan. Missing from that lineup, Santonio Holmes. Out probably for multiple games with a hamstring injury. On the keep, here is Smith. Slides down to protect himself. A couple of yards shy of a first down. One of the things you get with Geno Smith. He doesn't want to do this all the time, but he regulates the defense. It's a zone read. Osi Umanura closes, and that's the read Geno Smith takes. The only time he's going to keep the ball in a zone read, Mike, is if it's crystal clear, and he can still hurt you with his leg. He's averaging over five yards a carry. On this third down, Mike Goodson is making his Jets debut. Was arrested. Just a few weeks after he signed his free agent deal with the Jets. Four-game suspension. And 23 is out there for the first time in green and white. And he's got the pass complete for a first down inside the 30 and to the 27-yard line. Oh, I like that. Mike Nolan, defensive coordinator of the Falcons, comes with a disguise. He's going to show an all-out blitz with no safety in the middle of the field. But watch Will Moore retreat to the middle of the field. Geno Smith reads the blitz, finds his hot receiver. That's a great quarterback play by a young man right there, Mike, on third down. He had signed Goodson. He was found in New Jersey off a highway with a weapon in his car. Violating the league's substance abuse policy as well, thus the suspension for the four. He joins his backfield that has been featuring Bilal Powell in the start of this season, and Powell gets it inside the 25 so John they go wildcat we've seen the read on the option so Marty Morningwig got a lot of options on that 
food menu, it looks like, in front of him there. And he's going after these young Atlanta Falcon linebackers. Two rookies, 59, Jop Lobar, two, 55, Paul Warlow. And Omar Gaither, number 53, just got here. Wildcat look again, it snaps to Powell, who gives to Goodson with very little room to maneuver. And Steven Nicholas, the one veteran linebacker out there with Omar Gaither, comes up to make the tackle. It's a very different cast. You mentioned O.C. Humanure, the former Giant. He's one of the men up front. Bartu and Warlow, who you talked about, those are two rookies. Desmond Trufant is their first-round pick. So, John, there's a lot of communication we're going to have to watch closely with this group tonight. It has really hurt the Falcons on third down. They've given up 50%, which is almost last in the NFL. Let's see if Geno Smith can convert another one. Multiple tight ends in the game, including Jeff Cumberland, 87, who's at the top of the screen, isolated. Big guy. Smith throws. Caught, dropped by Cumberland in the air. He recaught it. I don't think it hit the ground. It's a first down. <laughs> Cumberland, butterfingers on it, able to get it back. First down Jets in the red zone. Let's take a look at the catch by Cumberland. How about that concentration to finish that reception? But Geno Smith, in a no-back set, gets an automatic blitz from Mike Nolan's Falcons, and he delivers a strike to his tight end to set up a first and goal in the red zone. What a start for the young quarterback. Cumberland let it get there in his body, deflected off of William Moore. It looked like David Nelson actually helped Cumberland secure it. Clean catch in the red zone. Geno Smith throws. It's caught. That's David Nelson. Who the Jets just signed this week. He played for Buffalo for three years, had 94 catches with the Bills, was cut at the end of training camp in Cleveland, where he was trying to hook on. And with all the injuries, Nelson comes in and is a factor early. Hardy Morningwig is doing a great job utilizing his personnel. Different formations, different alignments. Now there's three running backs in the backfield with Geno Smith, who's also a potential runner. Chris Ivory leads the way for Powell, who is stopped by Jonathan Babineau, the ninth-year man out of Iowa. You know, John, here are the Jets in the red zone, and they have not been in the red zone much this year. As a matter of fact, they've been in the red zone as little as any team in the NFL. This is just their seventh red zone trip in four-plus games. And on a third down... Kellen Winslow, number 81, has been the go-to target in red zone situations at the top of the screen. Keep an eye on him. Nelson in motion. Smith goes to Nelson with a catch. Couldn't get the first down. Desmond Trufant, who struggled last week against the Patriots, makes a good red zone play here. It's fourth and a yard. And Geno Smith was looking for the tight end. Winslow on the corner route. Atlanta did a nice job with Thomas Deku covering it. And there's the rookie. Joplo Bar 2 with help from another rookie, Desmond Trufant, setting up a fourth and short. Rex Ryan is going for it, Mike. They're going to go. Now, they didn't make the decision until 23 was on the play clock. So watch that play clock because they haven't called it in the huddle yet. Jets might have to burn a timeout here. Surprising that they would go for it on fourth down, a little outside of a yard in this situation. See, I don't know if they're going to try to draw him off or not, but it was a situation the play came in late, the decision was late, and it cost the Jets the opportunity if they wanted to go for it. And Smith, rookie quarterback, didn't recognize the play clock to call timeout. Now, sometimes when you're an offensive coordinator, you have to wait for the head coach to give it the okay whether right. we're going for it or kicking it. So I'm sure there was a little indecision on the sideline, and it bit the New York Jets. I'm surprised somebody didn't take a timeout from the sideline. Jets had not converted their two fourth and one opportunities this year, so the penalty backs him up five, and Nick Folk will try from 22 yards. So the block punt puts the Jets in good field position, and they open up with a field goal of 22 yards. Three nothing on the road for New York. And Monday Night Football is brought to you by GMC. 
Enter the Never Say Never sweepstakes for a chance to win a 2014 GMC vehicle at gmc.com slash NFL. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. And ESPNShop.com, where you can get all of your official NFL sideline gear. You get a peek at the Georgia Dome and our aerial coverage tonight from Atlanta is brought to you by Direct TV. 63 degree evening. Heavy rain last night here in the Atlanta metro area. So 3 0 Jets off that block punt. Able to get it down to the red zone and get a field goal. Second kickoff for Folk. Second touchback for Folk. No return for Jaquiz Rogers. And Ryan put it up in the air just three times on that opening drive. Two of three. And he's back on the field when you come back to the Georgia Dome. Big hole Atlanta and Matt Ryan tried to dig out from against New England here last Sunday night. Thus the 54 attempts and second most passing yards in franchise history. Second only to Chris Chandler in a game. An offense that has moved it but has not scored it in the red zone. Ryan's first down pass caught by Roddy White. And a gain of nine, and it'll be important to watch White, John, as this night moves on. Very much so. It's a hook route. Watch Roddy White come off the ball, burst and turn right over his inside shoulder. Nice job reaching for the football to cut the flight time down. But Roddy White has had a hard time taking off and decelerating. Looked pretty good there. High right ankle sprain going back to the preseason. Just has not had the time to heal. Up the middle run with Snelling, Jason Snelling. It's the first down to the 32-yard line. He's a guy who's been around here for seven years now, and he fills it whatever role it is. Need another running back, need a fullback. Snelling's been the one to do the job for Atlanta. He can run it and catch it and pick up a blitz, and he and Jaquiz Rogers will split the reps 50-50 tonight without Jackson. First and 10, it is a swing out. Snelling along the sideline, Calvin Pace. And Jaquin Jarrett, Jaquan Jarrett, excuse me, on the hit. John C. Rex Ryan's got the play sheet. He's calling the defense again like he did a few years ago. I love it. He lost Bob Sutton to the Kansas City Chiefs, Mike Pettin to the Buffalo Bills, two great coaches. Seven new starters. He needs to get back involved with his defense, and it's still as unpredictable as ever. Second and eight against a four-man rush. Ryan's got time. He's got White who lost the ball. And it's picked up by Julio Jones, who takes it inside the 20-yard line. Let's see if it will be ruled and remain a catch. If so, it turns into a huge 46-yard game. Matt Ryan read the two-deep zone. He sent Roddy White right down the seam, made the perfect throw. Josh Bush dislodges the ball, and that's what effort will do for you. Excellent work by Julio Jones, not being a spectator. And that looked like a catch. Had the ball a couple of steps. The time to make a move common to the game. They gain almost half the field on the catch and fumble, but the Jets will challenge. The Rex Ryan throwing the challenge flag to take a look at this one. Bill Levy, the referee tonight. New York Jets are challenging the ruling on the field of a catch and fumble and re-recovery. On the other side, Julio Jones didn't give up on the play as you were talking about. It's a great shot. Let's keep going while the play's going. And it may have taken his team down to the red zone. If this is ruled a catch. You got multiple steps in that move upfield. Looks like it'll stand. We'll see what Bill Levy thinks. See the ruling on the field, and we believe it will be confirmed. Here's Bill Levy, the referee. After reviewing the play, the receiver caught the ball, took three steps before he lost possession. It is a catch and fumble. The New York Jets will be charged their first time out. And even if the Jets are right on a second challenge, they cannot earn a third. 
here tonight. So the 47-yard total, 18 on the pass and 29 on the rest of the play, brings the Falcons to a place that they have not performed well inside the 20 at the red in the red zone. Where John was a struggle last week against New England, has been a struggle for the first four games. Well, it's been emphasized, and clearly Roddy White is back in the fold, which is exciting. Snelling is the back, and he'll run it up the middle and not go anywhere as David Harris was right there. Very good linebacker in his seventh year out of Michigan. You run a one-back power play at David Harris, you better block him. Take a look at him at the point of attack. You're going to see Garrett Reynolds, a right guard, pull. And David Harris stuffs the back. And that's been a big problem for these Falcons in the red zone. They fall behind in the down and distance. Way too many predictable passing situations. Jets showing Leger Duzabo over the line, came early, passes caught by Roddy White at 10. But Darren Walls made the tackle, but right on the nose, the backup Duzabo looked to be in the neutral zone. These pre-snap penalties are driving me crazy. I can only imagine how Rex Ryan feels. 45 penalties. be second and five or third Outside. in a couple number 78 defense five yard penalty repeat second down and Mike Smith will make it second and five had a hard time staying on sides way too many offsides on their defensive line and Matt Ryan is a master at the snap count I wouldn't be surprised if Matt Ryan goes on a hard count again it's kind of laughable last week the Jets cut their penalties in half from the prior week and they still had ten because they had a 20 penalty game and won it against Buffalo a couple of weeks ago. Second and five, it's a shotgun run. Rodgers looking to bounce it outside. That stout jet front, it is hard to run against this group. And John, you pointed it out as we were talking about why the red zone woes at the start. Inability to run is always one of the thumbnails of that's one of the red zone struggle teams and the Falcons haven't run it well in the red zone and they're third from last and I expect Matt Ryan to move the pocket in this third and short situation and Anton Smith in there on the wing Third and three, Ryan looks, Julio Jones the catch, and the extra strength to get out of the Wilkerson tackle gives Jones a first down. They're looking for Tony Gonzalez on a double move, the Jets covered it. So why not send a six foot four, 220 pound split end on a shallow cross? How about that north-south finish by Julio Jones? A well-earned six yard gain and a huge conversion. The Falcons need to finish this drive and get some confidence back in their red zone offense. First and goal, Atlanta to Jones working on the edge. Julio Jones gang tackled by the Jets inside the five. It started with Antonio Allen and David Harris with the finish. When you have a running play called and they load the box, these quarterbacks have built-in side adjustments. They throw the quick game to the outside, and it becomes a fire drill. That time, David Harris came from his middle linebacker position and did a great job capping off on Julio Jones. Falcons will take the opportunity to regroup before second and goal. And that'll be the first play to start the second quarter. Only points of the opening quarter. By virtue of that block punt, the Jets a good field position for their only drive of the first and turned it into a field goal. After one in Atlanta, Jets three, Falcons nothing on Monday Night Football. See it 5-0, and oh, then 4-1, and one, New England and Indianapolis. And we'll see Andrew Luck's Monday Night Football debut as the Colts take it out to San Diego. The Chargers late, late night last night with the loss to the Raiders in Oakland. So the Colts and the Chargers, Luck and Rivers next Monday night. 6.30 Eastern Monday Night Countdown, 8.25.
Eastern Time. We'll kick it off from San Diego. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Lisa Salters on the sideline. Second quarter begins with second and goal for the Falcons. Looking to take the lead. Julio Jones at the top of the screen against Antonio Cromartie. That's the matchup to watch. Well, the field's going to be open. Ryan throws towards Gonzalez and Jones. It's incomplete. And Jaquan Jarrett got in there again with the pressure from the safety position. Very well disguised blitz that time by the Jets. He comes right up the middle, untouched. And Kyle Wilson has the coverage, and Rex Ryan loves it. Is Rex hard to call plays against because he gives you so many odd things in certain spots on the field? One of the hardest. Muddy coverages, muddy fronts. You don't know what you're going to get. But you do know you're going to get Julio Jones and Antonio Cromartie mm -hmm. all night long at the top of the screen. In motion, Gonzalez for third and goal. Rolling that way, a shovel pass to Snelling for the touchdown. Got to give an assist to offensive coordinator Dirk Cutter. Bunch formation. Matt Ryan sprints out and throws the ball from this formation a lot. This time he's just going to shovel it with his left hand to Jason Snelling across the formation. And number 96, Muhammad Wilkerson, almost. almost had a big hand on that. But excellent call by Dirk Cutter. And they're one of the best screen teams in football. And I put that on the screen reel. It was double pass. His linemen were sneaking downfield there. Very close to an illegal man downfield. Extra point added by Matt Ryan. And Jason Snelling, his second receiving touchdown of the year. So the Jets almost had a turnover when Roddy White had it knocked out of his hands, but Julio Jones hustled, kept the drive alive, capped off by the Snelling shot. Young Falcon fans see a Matt Ryan touchdown pass, that little shovel. Very fantasy football friendly for some of you. Pass. It turns into a four-yard score for Jason Snelling. Ten plays in 80 yards. They do 80-yard drives often and well. Eighth 80-yard drive for touchdown here in the first four-plus games. It's one behind the Colts. The Broncos are in the league of their own in all the numbers. Passing, offense, you name it. Clyde Gates is back for the Jets, and he will get a return from four yards deep. And a nice one if Gates can get to the outside. Trying to get past the kicker, but a good tackle by Matt Bosher, the punter who's the kickoff man, across the 30. Gates will hear about that tomorrow in the meeting. What a play by Bosher. Nice return by Gates, too. 36 yards. You know, Smith grew up in South Florida. was a high school All-American, Miramar High School in the Miami area. And is uh, three years as a starter at West Virginia. They did a lot of the spread offense there tonight. We're seeing a lot of different looks with Geno Smith and the Wildcat, which they've done throughout the season. A lot of the first 10 plays, Mike Goodson taking the direct Wildcat snap. And Woodson able to use the speed to get to the outside across midfield and into Falcon territory at the 42-yard line. Pickup of 24 for Goodson. They've been running the ball to the strong side. This time they bring the guard and the fullback to the weak side. They run a counter play. And Bilal Powell, number 29, blocks two Atlanta Falcons. And Mike Goodson, welcome back to New York. They missed his speed coming out of the backfield. Good start for the ex-Texas A&M Aggie. Played with the Panthers for three years. Oakland last year. And we mentioned that four-game suspension really was not able to get through preseason either. Three in the backfield, it's play action, and the throw is too tall for Goodson. And Smith incomplete for the first time. Well, I'm surprised he didn't throw the ball down the field to his big tight end, Cumberland. Play action pass out of this pistol formation. They get Cumberland, who has deceptive speed, one-on-one -on -one with Will Moore. I'm surprised Geno didn't take a shot there. Strengths of Geno Smith include a big arm. Big arm, and he's been a very accurate deep ball passer. Surprised he didn't take a shot in this field position. Second and ten, it's Chris Ivory, the former New Orleans Saint, with a run. 
And Paul Warlow, one of the two undrafted rookie free agent linebackers in the lineup for the Falcons, helped make the play. It's my kind of guy, Mike Warlow. He's from Delaware. Coffeeville Junior College, undrafted to starter for the Atlanta Falcons on Monday Night Football. Warlow led the NFL in tackles in the preseason. What a tremendous responsibility for this young man on Monday Night Football. I don't think head coach Mike Smith expected Warlow to be here on Monday night. Five in the pattern for Smith. On third and nine, he has time, and he has a reception for Jeremy Curley inside the 20-yard line in front of the rookie Desmond Trufant. Lack of a pass rush continues to plague this Atlanta Falcon defense. You can't cover him forever. And Geno Smith has all day to throw. Great work up front by these Jets. And you see Curley, who had a concussion early in the season, uncover on a little corner route. That's pitch and catch. Atlanta's got to find a pass rush, Mike. Hey, left guard, 67, Brian Winters. You see right there in your screen, first NFL start. Did a nice job on that play. Second trip in the red zone for New York. Smith looking to take off. Gets away from Cliff Matthews, but can't get back to the line of scrimmage as Joplo Bartu. That other undrafted rookie free agent linebacker for the Falcons makes the stop. Why are we talking about rookie free agent linebackers? Sean Weatherspoon, one of the best for the Falcons, is on that injured reserve where you can return later in the year in six weeks. And Akeem Dent injured his ankle against the Patriots. Two starters out tonight, two undrafted rookies in. And multiple substitutions by the Falcons on defense. The Jets continue to use their personnel efficiently. That was officially a sack, second and 13. Goodson up the middle, good push. As Goodson gets popped at the 15, it'll give them a much more manageable third down. As Marty Morningwig ponders third and six. Marty Morningwig, as we said earlier, has five receivers, Mike. Five running backs and three tight ends available tonight. It seems like he's used them all in the first quarter and a half. Well, they're confused right now, John, who's supposed to be in the game. The play clock's at 17. They just need to take a timeout here. And they're going to get the flag for having 12 players in the huddle, which is illegal substitution. Illegal substitution. 12 men in the offensive huddle. Five-yard penalty. Third down. When you use multiple personnel groupings, you have to come onto the field signaling in this crowd noise. And if you're in the huddle, you have to pay attention to the sideline substitutions. That's an inexcusable error by the Jets. That's the second pre-snap penalty tonight. <laughs> you know, John, as you're counting there, as everybody's going back to the huddle, I think they had with Geno 13 illegal, illegal substitution. Well, third and 11 is a lot different than third and six. And you better be careful at the top of the screen throwing the ball to Asante Samuel, who has 50 career interceptions. Third and 11. Five Falcons come. Smith on the fire up top. Caught for the touchdown by Cumberland. How about that throw? Woo. Wake up, New York Jets. Geno Smith is on fire. A seam route to Cumberland, and Joplo Bartu has the coverage. What a throw on the back shoulder by Geno Smith. Third and 11. I'm nope. really impressed with what the young quarterback has done so far. And pass rush wasn't an impact on the play. He had time. Throws to Cumberland for a touchdown for the second consecutive week. And Marty Morningwood told us last night, you know, I need to get 87 on the field and involved more. As the extra point is added by Folk, because Cumberland tore his Achilles in 11, played well when Dustin Keller got hurt last year, got off to a slow start this year, but comes up with a big grab. Geno Smith and the Jets, offense looking good. Up three, early second quarter. And their version of the Dirty Bird here in the ATL. Million. Marine and freshwater representations in that beautiful Georgia Aquarium. Two drives, two scores for the Jets. They lead 10-7.
And the full kickoff will not be brought out. Rodgers has had touchbacks on all three here. Can't get a return going. The, John, the Jets come off their worst game of the season against Tennessee. Geno Smith, four turnovers. A lot of talk, all the turnovers he's making. And the feel around this team wasn't good if you read the papers and heard the quotes this week. It's a good start coming here on the road against Atlanta for this Jets offense. Well, Geno Smith is building a foundation, and I'm seeing the growth. Rex Ryan is seeing the growth, and so are his teammates. Important that Atlanta stops the fire quickly. All three Falcon drives starting at their own 20 for Matt Ryan. With the quiz, Rodgers as the back. Ryan gets it to Rodgers, who gets hit by David Harris, limiting the game to a yard. David Harris, awful quiet last year, leads the Jets in tackles. Watch him keep his eyes on Matt Ryan. He sees the check down all the way. That's an NFL play right there by Harris. Harris and Demario Davis, the other inside linebacker, have given the Jets real solid play on the inside. To go with that good defensive front. Second and nine, the Cromarty Julio Jones battle continues at the top. And here is Julio with the catch. Limited game is coming over in the zone. Kyle Wilson, Jets' former first round pick with the stop. And it's these third down situations that Matt Ryan has to be very careful with. You're going to get 10 to 12 snaps a game from Rex Ryan that you can't prepare for because they're designer blitzes. And watch Ryan use his snap count to try to decipher the blitz and the coverage from this Jets defense. Jets are fired up to get going at Ryan. They get to him. Brought down on the pressure up the middle by Sheldon Richardson, the first round pick out of Missouri. They're the big bad wolves. Richardson, Copels, Muhammad Wilkerson right up the gut. And they'll blow your house down with inside power and overload blitzes, and Matt Ryan has no chance. He Hampton. walked Jarrett Reynolds, the guard, right back to him. Wow. And that Richardson is the man they selected with the Daryl Revis pick. That's right. That Revis trade for the first rounder became the 13th overall pick, and they took Richardson. Bosher blocked earlier. Gets this one away with Curley back. A good punt of 55 yards. Curley from the 30. Turns it upfield and returns it for four. And Robert Alford, the special teamer. And the nickelback for this team on the stop. Two drives, two scores for Geno Smith and the Jets. Take the field with the lead in a moment. Get a great sense there of how the western edge of downtown features the Georgia Dome. And to the right side of your picture, that's where the new stadium will be built. Last couple of hurdles towards that being passed last week. From the 34, another Wildcat snap direct to Bilal Powell. Gain of three, John. They've been through the deep playbook already tonight. How about these formations? Three backs and a tight end and one wide receiver. Then they motion to a no-back set on the very next play. Marty Morningwig is doing it all tonight. Then he gets into the Wildcat with Bilal Powell. Geno Smith lines up as a wide receiver. Then it's a two-back pistol formation with Cumberland at tight end. It's snap after snap. Marty Morningwig has the Falcons and this young linebacking core off balance, and he knows it. We get Powell and Goodson in the same backfield, bring Goodson out as a wide receiver. And on second down, Smith with that big arm has Cumberland again in the middle of the field. The acceleration from Jeff Cumberland brought down in the red zone again at the 16-yard line. That's Geno Smith's favorite play. All go. Four verticals, and I'll read the free safety. He's going to look to his left, move the free safety, and Cumberland's wide open down the seam. But it's formation personnel usage by Marty Morningwig, and Cumberland's having a career night. 47 on that grab, three catches, a touchdown, 79 yards for the fourth-year tight end from Illinois. Third trip in the red zone for the Jets. They had six red zone trips in the first four games. 
Smith, complete Curley, through a tackle, Curley to the pylon, he's in, touchdown New York Jets. Tino Smith, under no pressure whatsoever, is ripped in the Atlanta Falcons. Just a simple arrow route by Curley, and McLean is no match. The start to the inside, break back outside, McLean's there for the tackle. Nobody on this Atlanta Falcon defense has stepped up tonight, and I think Curley's in there, Mike. Yeah, he, he's got possession as he breaks the plane. I know a lot of the fans down here were watching the Georgia-Tennessee game on Saturday, and you saw a player reach for the pylon but lose possession. Curley clearly had it and then hit the pylons. That's a touchdown. It is confirmed upstairs. The Falcon fans were booing the Atlanta defense on the way off the field. Folk adds the extra point. The Atlanta fans unhappy. Jet fans delirious. Geno Smith, 8 of 9, 134 yards, two touchdown passes, and a 10-point Jets lead. Uh, the uh, roller coaster that you ride when you have a rookie. Geno Smith with great numbers. And we talked about going to break the two touchdown passes, three drives, three scores led by the Jets. And this is with this background, 11 turnovers in his first four games. It is the most for a player in his first four games since 1998. Who were the quarterbacks then with those, all those turnovers? Ryan Leaf was one of them. And the other one was Peyton Manning, who had more turnovers. Not to indicate that Geno's going to go down one path or the other, but you understand the rookie quarterbacks, their maturation, as we pointed out in Countdown, the prism through which we view that has changed a lot because of Matt Ryans, Russell Wilson, Andrew Luck, RG3. Well, give the man some protection like he's getting tonight. That has a lot to do with the turnovers. His supporting cast has really stepped up as well. First chance for a return for Jaquiz Rogers from the one. And he gets a pass to 20 out to the 24-yard line. And Nick Ballore makes the tackle. Now, the other side here, John, this is an Atlanta team that could go four games behind the New Orleans Saints in the NFC South. Matt Ryan's numbers are okay, but the offense has not made those little plays, and that's the story of their season, really. I think if you look in that huddle, Todd McClure, their longtime center, is gone. Peter Kahn, 66, has to play better. The left tackle, Lamar Holmes, has been disappointing at right tackle and disappointing at left tackle. And Jeremy Trueblood, the right tackle, just got here. He was cut by the Redskins. First down, try to establish a run. It's Snelling. Game two. And he stopped the 26-yard line. Demario Davis. There on the tackle. So, John, you're an Atlanta team with all the expectations we talked about. Three losses last year, three losses first quarter of the season. You come here, you play the Jets, you get off to a poor start like this. Does Mike Smith have to worry about his guys getting tight right now? Yeah, he better. I'll mm -hmm. tell you, because it doesn't matter what you did last year in this league. There's desperation in this Falcon stadium, and there's Falcon desperation on his offense. They've got Joe Hawley 61 in there. It's an extra offensive lineman. And on second and seven, they all protect Ryan, who finds Gonzalez. Tackled from behind by Harris. And the man he shook from, Demario Davis. First down at left. There'll be a lot of that tonight. Corner route with Julio Jones clearing it out. Gonzalez does a great job flattening out of his break. Ball's thrown accurately and on time, and Tony Gonzalez continues to be a dominant receiver. Here's the whole 95% likely to retire last year. Decided to come back after getting that first playoff win, the chance to make one last run for the Super Bowl. And he's still playing at a very high level. Jason Snelling with the carry. Quan Jarrett, who has been in there a lot for a man listed as a backup safety, makes the tackle. You know, one of the problems with this Falcon offense is they have some tendencies and some predictability. When they want to run the football, they have to use Joe Howley, an offensive lineman, at tight end. That's not Tony Gonzalez's cup of tea anymore. But when you start bringing in an offensive lineman to block a strong side running play, you develop some tendencies and look for Matt Ryan to throw some play action passes off of that same look later.
On second and six, Ryan complete. It's a first down for Roddy White. Cross midfield, he lost the football, but it's recovered by the fact that's twice we've seen White get hit and lose the handle. You know, when you miss practice and you're rehabbing an ankle injury, you lose some of the fundamentals and conditioning that have made you a rare great player. And that's the second time Roddy has put the ball on the ground tonight. And that's uncommon for him. Again, Jarrett, that safety has been in there most of the time instead of Antonio Allen. Jets adjust their defensive line to get over to that strong side where the tight end is at the top of the screen. And Rodgers runs, and he is stopped by Demario Davis. Mario Davis, an interesting man, second-year player, has to replace the animated Bart Scott, and that's hard to do. Bart Scott was a great Jet with a great personality, and Demario Davis brings a lot, not only as a playmaker, but as a leader on this team. They like his speed and athleticism. He just showed it off there. Talk about Scott and how vocal he is. We asked uh, David Harris, how chatty is Davis? He said, can't, can't shut him up. Talking all the time, but playing well as well. Second and ten, it's a blitz picked up, and Ryan has time to hit Julio Jones for the first down at the 26-yard line. Well, that's a case where Antonio Cromartie is paying, playing a coverage he rarely plays. It's a two-deep zone, and Cromartie is rolled up in the flat, and he doesn't get any reroute on Julio Jones at all. That's too easy. And he isolated Josh Bush's safety and coverage. But when you play cover two like that, the corner needs to reroute the wide receiver, put his hands on him. That time, Cromarty failed to do so. Extra offensive lineman in again for the Falcons. And it is play action off that personnel group, John, as you talked about. And Roddy White with the sideline catch complete. For a gain of eight. I like what Roddy White does on the sideline. I used to coach receivers, Mike, and it's hard to get a wide receiver to track the sideline and get two feet in routinely, week in, week out. You have to know where the 12th man is, and that's the sideline, the end line, and the end zone, and Roddy does a great job of that. Atlanta back in the red zone where they struggled this year but scored. On their only trip in earlier tonight, what a play behind the line of scrimmage by Kenrick Ellis, the third rounder from a couple of years ago out of Hampton. When you run in the 46 defense, you cover the center in both guards. And when you cover the center with a 350-pound nose tackle, Peter Kahn's has to step up and deliver. There's a lot of big bodies on this Jet defensive line, but... As I said earlier, they have struggled to block these running plays, and Henry Ellis. See if they sneak this in before the two-minute warning or not. They will not. Matt Ryan was spending so much time on the research project of who's doing what on third and five. Fast-moving half hits the two-minute warning. Third and five for Atlanta. Toyota halftime. Coming up, Chris Berman back in the studio. Sunday soundtrack, Sean Payton and the Saints. Saw them last Monday, rolling on Sunday. We've got the Sunday Gruden Grinders and the update on the baseball playoffs. Coming up on the Toyota halftime. Any reviews initiated by the booth upstairs as we're inside the two-minute warning. It is third and five for the Falcons. Cromarty tracking Julio Jones, Ryan going the other side, and it's brought in by Gonzalez as he battles Ellis Langster. Great catch by Gonzalez. What can Langster do? They isolate Gonzalez on the backside of trips. You can't cover Tony Gonzalez any better than Langster has him covered here. It's the wingspan, the body control. Wow. Strong hands. You have to snatch it and bring it back to your body to protect these catches. What a play by Gonzalez. Three catches for Gonzalez, all leading to first downs. And Ryan will give it to the back. Snelling up the middle. He is stopped 
Inside the 10 as Jarrett again joins David Harris. Atlanta with a full complement of timeouts. They're trying to be comfortable here and use all the clock in the half and not give it back to the Jets. Rex Ryan's going to his dime defense, going to bring in as many defensive backs as he can to counter this open formation that Atlanta likes to use. Second and seven, they rush three, drop eight, and Ryan fires up top for White. Penalty marker down as Cromarty in coverage will be called for interference. Cromarty's got to win. They double Gonzalez, and it's clearly P.I. Prior to the pass, holding number 52 defense. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. <laughs> Automatic first down. That's the double vice I was telling you about earlier, Mike. They yep. took Gonzalez out of the game. They're going to make somebody else win. That time, Matt Ryan recognized it. Now, John, the difference there, the fact that it wasn't called pass interference in the end zone, and it was called holding, it's not at the one. It's half the distance to the goal, so it ends up there inside the five. Now 33 seconds left at first and goal, so they'll use those timeouts if they don't score early here. Jason Snelling the back has it can't run on that front Sheldon Richardson the first round pick timeout Falcons and their fans continue to get on their team step out quick for second and goal 28 seconds till halftime if you watched football yesterday all weekend just a tremendous job the NFL and the American Cancer Society do together helping women across the country make a crucial catch breast cancer awareness month and the NFL has had such an impact on it NFL.com slash pink for more information out of the Atlanta timeout it is second and goal down to 28 seconds left in this first half look at this jet defense one man in a stance Three receivers left, including Gonzalez. Going that way is Ryan, and he can't hit Harry Douglas. It's incomplete. Coverage by Kyle Wilson, third and goal. All the movement by this Jet defense. Matt Ryan finds the one-on-one -on -one coverage. And I thought Harry Douglas could have pulled this ball in. Somebody needs to make a great play for this Falcon offense. Ball is out off his body. But their inability to run the ball on early downs, Mike, has forced Atlanta into obvious passing situations, and it is very difficult in pro football in the red zone. Jets are good, but the Falcons are bad running it, and they cannot do it down in the red zone. Will they go to Gonzalez? Will they go to Julio? Third and goal. It is Jones with blocking, trying to get in. And denied inside as he gets just down to the one-yard line. Dewan Landry with that first hit. 14 seconds left. And Matt Ryan takes a look over there. Looks over to Mike Smith on the sideline. Smith takes a timeout now. With seven seconds until halftime. Good tackling by the Jets. Well, that's a lot of respect, obviously, Atlanta has for this jet run defense. A quick screen to the outside. Roddy White and Harry Douglas in an Oklahoma drill blocking and you see Roddy White at the point of attack normally one of the best blocking wide receivers in pro football the Roddy missed his block there and John as you look at Rex Ryan excited that his defense made a stop let's talk here seven seconds left the Jets lead by ten Atlanta's down here in the red zone remember they went for it in the red zone in the first half last week against the Patriots didn't get in and Matt Ryan's coming back out here don't know if they're gonna go for it try to draw the Jets offside An interesting decision in a ten-point game yeah, well, they haven't slowed the Jets down, and they're not playing with a full deck on defense, and Mike Smith knows it. They might have to score 30 points to win tonight, but it is a surprising oh. call in back-to-back -back weeks. And we know they're not running it well. Levine Toilolo, the tall tight end, number 80, is in motion. Fourth and goal. Play action. Is anybody open? Ryan puts it up for grabs, and the flag is down. With one second left in the half. The initial signal is pass interference on the Jets. 
On every New York Jet said they're throwing it to Gonzalez. Pass interference, number 56, defense. Now it in the end zone. The ball will be spotted at the one-yard line. First down. Watch this coverage. McIntyre, Harris, Davis. I mean, they knew they weren't going to throw the ball to Joe Howley, the eligible tight end. That is pass interference. So now there's one second left. So you're down to the final play, barring a defensive foul. And like we said, they haven't run the ball well. What do you do here? Well, if Steven Jackson was the tailback, I'd slam him in there. But with 180 pounds of Quiz Rogers, I look for another pass. Final play of the half. It is Rogers, and he fights for the goal line, and he is stopped by the Jets. Quentin Popel started it. Sheldon Richardson finished it, and the Jets stream off the bench to go to the defensive players. And Rex Ryan pretty fired up at the stop. They're going to run it off the right side. Right guard, Garrett Reynolds. Right tackle, Jeremy Trueblood. Get knocked back at the point of attack. And that's how you want to go to the locker room if you're Rex Ryan. A dramatic goal line stand by your defense in a 10-point lead. 14 plays, 75 yards, no points. Chance to get the ball first, Boomer. So we're at a halftime show with New York. Because this next 30 minutes could really determine where they are this season. Now let's go back to Mike Tirico and John Gruden. Chris, thank you. The touchback to begin the third quarter. And the Jets will take over at their own 20, leading by the score of 17 to 7. So the curious decision by Mike Smith to eschew the field goal as he did last week down in the red zone. And the Jets defense comes up with the stop. Well, that was interesting. So the Jets will take over at their 20-yard line with Geno Smith. Three touchdowns in the first three, or three scores, I should say, in the Jets' first three drives. That hasn't happened in nearly five years to start a game for the Jets. And from the 20, Smith hands to Bilal Powell, and he stopped for a minimal game OCU in Europe along with Steven Nicholas on the stop for the Falcons. And in these second and long situations, the Atlanta Falcons must find a pass rush. They have not put any pressure on the rookie quarterback tonight. And if you want to force a mistake, a pass rush is a good place to start. Some technical issues as we get started back here in the Georgia Dome for the second half, but haven't missed anything, so we'll do our best to get those rectified. It's second and ten. And on the inside run, it is Chris Ivory who takes it across the 25 out near the 26-yard line. So it'll be third and four. And John, what this Jets offense did was give Geno Smith some very comfortable situations. They're coming off a four-turnover game, and they're using their ability to run the ball effectively to control the game when they've had the ball. The offensive coordinator, Marty Morningwig, has done a great job using different personnel groupings and the wildcat to keep this young linebacking core of the Falcons off balance. Third and four, and the Falcons need to stop it here as a timeout is taken. So timeout before the third and four for Geno Smith and the Jets. Off the Atlanta call timeout back here in the Georgia Dome and John the Jets have done a good job of maintaining drives four of five in the first half. And OCU Manure the next ex New York Giant needs to deliver his 78th sack. They must put pressure on Geno Smith. Here's a pressure look in the A gaps. Empty backfield on third and four. There is number 50, Yuvin Yura on cue. John with the sack back at the 16-yard line. That's all on Geno Smith. You have to know how every protection works. Atlanta comes with a double A-gap blitz between the center and the two guards. And you're going to be one short in a no-back protection. But O.C. Yuvin Yura comes right off. Gino's blind side, and that's all on the quarterback. You have to know how a five-man protection works. And if they bring the sixth, it's on you. No one touched him. 
That is a loss of eight, and Ryan Quigley, the new punter who the Jets added just a couple of weeks ago, with the kick toward the sideline, a 47-yarder. And from the 35, Harry Douglas with a return. To midfield, and he's brought down by the deep snapper, Tanner Herder. OCU Manura and somebody on this defensive side for the Falcons finally making a play. Eighth amongst active players in sacks. It's weird to see him in a number 50. He's kind of messed around with what his jersey number is. But he made plays like he was wearing that 72 that he did for the Giants for a decade. Oh, he certainly did. And I, again, want to reiterate, Mike, that sack is chalked up to Geno Smith. The 11 turnovers is one thing. But 15 sacks and a few of those sacks are because Geno's not quite sure how this protection system works. The Falcons needed somebody to make a play, give them some juice in this game. From midfield, best field position of the game, Ryan Middle, Gonzalez. Gain of 14 for Tony. Why would you retire if you're Tony <laughs> Gonzalez? You got to read the middle of the defense. Is it two deep safeties? Is it a single safety? You have to uncover versus zone defenses. Who does it better than the 13-time Pro Bowler, Tony Gonzalez? Four catches for Gonzalez on the night. First down run with Jaquiz Rogers, and again, the Jets are on the other side of a line of scrimmage. That has been the story all night when Atlanta tries to run. That's my guy, Snacks, right there. Damon Harrison, they call him Snacks. He's the nose tackle, number 94. He's gonna just take Garrett Reynolds, the right guard, out of business. I love watching Damon Harrison from William Penn College, Mike. He went from 370 to 333. Excellent run defender. It's one of the reasons he earned the name Snacks. They're trying to get him to lose weight. They put Rice Krispie treats out, <laughs> and they kind of joked around looking for your snacks on a regular basis. Nickname stuck. Pressure coming. Ryan goes to Levine Toilolo, the other tight end who gets the first down inside the 25. Toilolo, the fourth round pick rookie out of Stanford. Well, it's a field blitz. The Jets overload the blitz at the top of the screen, and you're going to see two or three New York Jets in perfect position to tackle Toy Lolo short of the first down. Uncommon missed tackles from this Jet secondary. And the rookie from Stanford makes a play. His fourth catch of the year. Quiz Rogers leads one tackle and another. And Rogers puts his head down and gets a half dozen yards. But we have two flags down and it's coming back. Holding. Number 66 offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. It's the center, Peter Kahn's. Peter Kahn's has had his hands full all night. Todd McClure, the longtime center, retired in the offseason. They moved Kahn's from right guard to center. And he has had a real problem tonight. That time he hooks Muhammad Wilkerson. And the Falcons have had no running game at all, Mike. And you can see why Matt Ryan threw it 54 times last week. They are averaging 1.6 yards per carry. 15 rushes, 24 yards here tonight. Go on first and 20 with the extra lineman in to protect. Rodgers stood up in the open field. We told you right at the start, the Jets defense can play with anyone, can keep them in games, and they're showing it here tonight led by David Harris. Yeah. I wouldn't want to call plays against the Jets, and I wouldn't want to catch a ball in the flat when David Harris is covering me either because he takes Jaquiz Rogers down hard. It's about the fourth play I've seen the veteran out of Michigan make tonight, and it's a, another long yardage situation for Atlanta. It's the same faces as Gonzalez. It's Roddy White. It's Julio Jones, Harry Douglas, but they don't have time to make the plays because of the offensive line struggles. Second and 20. And Ryan's throw to Gonzalez is completing the open field with a stiff arm. Tony will gain seven before being taken out by Dewan Landry and company. 11 Jets within five yards of the line of scrimmage. They show an all-out blitz. They bail out of there. And Ryan finds Gonzalez, but there's Dewan Landry, the elder statesman of this Jets secondary. 30 years old. 
and he has a history with Rex Ryan back in his Raven days. Need to get to the 15 to get a first down. Ryan throws, it's Gonzalez again. Just like last week, another big night for Tony Gonzalez and a first down at the 11. David Harris can't believe that Tony Gonzalez caught that ball. He pushes up the field and he's gonna back Harris off, use his inside arm, first turn and the ball's thrown perfectly. Precision timing from Matt Ryan. Tremendous trust and confidence in Gonzalez in the middle of the field. And these running backs are doing a great job picking up blitzes, Mike. Gonzalez, John, four yards away from moving to sixth all-time in the league's history in receiving yards. To quiz Rogers that back now, he picks up another block, and it's Gonzalez to the five-yard line. And those may be the yards there that, for the moment, will move him to sixth all-time in the receiving list in NFL history in terms of yards. They line him up everywhere. He's just going to run a little turn route with Julio Jones clearing it out on the inside, but... Here we are back in the red zone. Atlanta's in their heavy personnel grouping. I would be shocked if they attempt another run in this situation. Second and three, they do run. And it's a bounce to the outside for Rodgers, who's in for the Falcon touchdown. I love it. Bear defense. The old-fashioned 46 defense, and Jaquiz Rogers bounces it outside. They try the left side, but everybody's covered. They're going to run the ball right off the left side. And it's good blocking by Tony Gonzalez, and you see number 30, Darren Walls, the corner. He's got to sit through the traffic and make that tackle. A huge conversion after the mishap at the end of the first half. First rushing touchdown of the year for Rodgers. Extra point by Matt Bryant. So the sack by OCU Manura forces the short field position. They take over at midfield in eight plays and 50 yards. And the third year man out of Oregon State, all five, six of Jaquiz Rodgers, tightens this up to a three point game. Those are the pictures they take from upstairs and you show what the formation is, where the defense is. There aren't a lot that have looked good with running plays for Matt Ryan and the Falcons, but they get a good block with Tony Gonzalez, who was the key man on that last drive. And the touchdown run by Jaquiz Rogers makes it a three-point game. The Jets will take over at their own 20 after Geno Smith was sacked on the third down last time they had the ball. Inside of eight minutes left. it would be a tie game if Atlanta would kick that field goal before halftime. John, back with you here in Atlanta. Geno Smith told us last night, difference college to the pros, you got to be perfect on every play. One or two could doom you. What happened on the third down a moment ago? Well, you got to understand every protection. And right here, the Jets are in a no-back set. They've only got five protectors. He needs to know that. But Atlanta brought six. So the Jets do a great job blocking them five most dangerous, and they turn the widest loose away from the quarterback. Geno has to see that. He's got to throw a hot or he's got to change the protection. That's all on the quarterback. Geno will learn from that, but it's a hard way to learn on the job training in this league. So it looks like the offensive line blew it to us, but no, the offensive did. line did the right thing? They did a great job right yeah. there, and Geno's got to learn from that. I'm sure he will the hard way. Taking over at their own 20. And on the give, it's a run up the middle of Bilal Powell for four. Blocking continues downfield. The receivers and the DBs, that's why you kept hearing the whistle blow. And I think Marty Morningwig needs to stay on the gas pedal, Mike. You get in the first 15 plays, you use nine or ten different personnel groupings, and I hope he stays after the Falcons with his young quarterback. They've been hard to stop tonight. You saw OCU Manura pick the ball up and move it back a little bit like no one was looking. Well, the headlinesman, line judge were right on it. The ball is spotted in its proper place. After the gain of four, sort of Curley gets away from the first tackle and gets the first down. Across the 30, Jeremy Curley takes it to the 32. You think it's important to these Atlanta Falcons? Jonathan Babineau 
comes from his defensive tackle position and comes all the way to the outside to track this quick screen. Number 95, Babineau. The team leader on defense of these Atlanta Falcons does a great job showing away with his effort. It was Austin Howard the tackle out there tagged William Moore who missed the tackle and got hit in the chops on top of it. Number 33, here is Smith, first down, being pressured. Throws it on the run and it's knocked down. Tried to squeeze it between multiple Falcons, but Corey Peters, Perret Jerry, and Jonathan Babineau were all closing in on him. And I know Marty Morningwig was holding his <laughs> breath there. When the timing breaks down and the quarterback is under duress, you have to instinctively throw the ball away or clearly to one of your own. And that's where Geno has struggled the most when he's been under duress. Eight interceptions, three fumbles, 11 turnovers in his first four games. Clean thus far tonight. The 33, Bilal Powell runs up the middle to the 37. So the, the Jets running game, John, it really had a many options for this team. And we mentioned the four-game suspension and the reasons with Goodson in the first half. Chris Ivory they traded for on draft day. But Bilal Powell with his hard work keeping his feet going, He's turned out to be a better back than I think people thought this year. He could do a lot of things. And another third and medium situation. Keep an eye on I, on the rookie right corner, Desmond Trufant. The Patriots got after him last week. Let's see if Geno Smith does. If they help him with extra guys staying in the block, the pressure comes. Smith puts up the deep ball for Curley, and it's incomplete. The closing safety, William Moore, along with the man you mentioned, John Trufant, on the cover. That's what I like about Trufant. He's got a lot of confidence. We know he's got a family history in this league, but on a key third down, he walked up and challenged Curley. And he gets help from his veteran safety, Will Moore. Nice play. You mentioned the family history. His brothers on the opposite side with the Jets, Isaiah Trufant. His brother Marcus hasn't hooked on with anyone. DB for a decade in the league. Good pressure. Quigley gets it away. 46 on the kick. They're caught by Harry Douglas. So Atlanta ball at its own 18. Matt Ryan and the Falcons try to take the lead back in this one. One in three Falcons. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by the new LG G2. Accomplish more. With LG, it's all possible. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. NFLShop.com. Find the largest selection of jerseys and hats at the official store of the NFL. And Autotrader.com. Now compare new and used cars and find the best deal on Autotrader.com. From Atlanta, our aerial coverage on this Monday night brought to you by DirecTV. 17-14, Jets on top. Falcons only point to this third quarter. Matt Ryan on first down, setting up the screen with Snelling. His first contact by Sheldon Richardson, but Snelling with the best work on that play. Good run for eight yards. Are you kidding me? They run that little chip screen to the left side of this Jet defense, and Snelling just broke eight tackles. Watch this right off the left side, Mike. It's a no-game play. There's one tackle he breaks, two tackles. Here's three. Four, five, six tackles, seven tackles he runs through. Snelling can play. Second to run, Snelling and Rodgers filling in for the injured Steven Jackson. Second and two, now Snelling on the ground. And again, this team cannot run against the Jets. Game of a yard. Well, those of you just joining us over from the Rays' dramatic win over the Red Sox, the uh, Atlanta Falcons uh, team that's used to being a part of the postseason. They have had so much success under Mike Smith. But in this division where nobody has repeated as a champ one year to the next, the NFC South, the Saints have jumped out 5-0. You now, if the Falcons lose tonight, they are four behind after five games, plus a head-to-head -head loss to New Orleans. So the team that was the number one seed last year 
dealing for a hole they didn't think they'd have to handle to start this year. Third and one, and they throw for it and just check it down to Snelling for the first down at the 31-yard line, which gives you an idea of what they think of their running game right now. This gives you an idea of how poised Matt Ryan is. They want to throw the ball to Julio Jones on a speed out against Antonio Cromartie. They put him in motion. He ran a speed out. Cromartie sat on it. And Matt Ryan had the presence to get to his check down receiver. How good is Matt Ryan? 23 for 20. 24 for 27. It's hard to say. <laughs> it's hard to do. Real hard. Only one throw has traveled more than 15 yards in the air. It's been mostly intermediate passes here tonight. And he lost the ball as he was loading up. It's free on the ground. And I think the Jets, Lejay Duzabal has it. It was Muhammad Wilkerson who forced it out. And the Falcon turnover gives the Jets the ball in great field position. I tried to tell you he was going to be a superstar, Mike, and he is. He's no secret. He beat Jeremy Trueblood off the snap to the inside. And he not only strips the ball, his Jet teammate recovers it, but... Muhammad Wilkerson can rush inside, he can rush outside, and he can ruin your best game plan. That's a great, he just beat the whole right side of the offensive line, went through two guys. He's special. Wow. Into the first round, 2011 draft, they took him. Muhammad Wilkerson forces the fumble, and the veteran Leger Duzable to recovery. So here are the Jets, up three, and Geno Smith in good field position. Throws it out to Bilal Powell. Good move in the open field by Powell. Takes it inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. And number 59, Joplo Bartu, said, I'm not at Texas State anymore. I'm playing with the big boys. Nice job by Geno Smith going through his progressions. He gets to his check down receivers and watch this. Jets go quick, jump on the ball in second and one to Powell, who has the first down at the 15-yard line. Marty Morningwig is really using a variety of offense. If you are just joining us, the Jets scored on their first three drives. It's an offense that's been so turnover plagued this year. Smart, creative, innovative football without Santonio Holmes, the best receiver. And in position here, up three, with two and a half to go in the third. And Cumberland, number 87, in a bunch formation at the top of the screen, has been a go-to target. Down to the 15, pressure, and brought down by Corey Peters. Big loss on the play, second sack of the quarter for the Falcons. That's that pass rush we were looking for from this Falcon defense. And Brian Winters, back up left guard, who took over for Vlad Dukas, struggles in one-on-one -on -one pass protection. Looked like he was expecting some help from Nick Mangold, didn't get it. They have struggled at left guard, these Jets, Mike, since Alan Fanica retired. Matt Slauson left town. Vlad Dukas did not work out. Now they're playing with winners. Saw Smith, who's had fumble issues, protect the ball as he was being sacked. Second and 20 throw is incomplete behind Jeff Cumberland, the tight end who has some big catches, including a touchdown earlier tonight. You see the difference between Matt Ryan, who's worked with the Hall of Famer Gonzalez, working in the middle of the field, then Cumberland and Geno Smith, who are two young players that are clearly a work in progress. And right here, Geno Smith needs to be very careful that he doesn't take a sack. He's taken a couple this year that have knocked the Jets out of field goal range. Very important to come away with something. As a play caller, would you be safe here? I'd be very safe. Screen, draw, move the pocket. I was wrong again, Mike. Empty out the backfield, third and 20. Pressure coming. Now he's got some room to run, picking up a block of the 20. And down to the 18-yard line, the open field tackle by Robert McClain. Will tighten up the field goal to about 36 yards of an attempt for Nick Folk. Nick Folk has been automatic this year. Eight for eight. And he's been clutch. He's hit some long-range bombs, Mike. He's had a lot of field goal attempts, John, in this 40 to 49-yard range, which is the sign of an offense that doesn't work well in the red zone. They've had so few trips in the red zone this year, but tonight they've been getting down there on a regular basis. Out of the hold of the punter, Ryan Quigley. 
Holt from 36 makes the lead six. The turnover by Matt Ryan. The fumble turns into a Jets field goal. No traffic in Atlanta. John, it's a lot nicer coming here and not having to play here, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a hard place to play. They it didn't was. like me here either. <laughs> they like me a little bit better now. They like you all over the NFC South now. <laughs> Got to really credit the job that Arthur Blank mm -hmm. has done with this franchise. Wow. Thomas Dimitrov in the front office. And Mike Smith, the head coach, with a terrific hire. This franchise was struggling. It's a touchback. John, the man you tipped as the grinder coming in tonight is having a good game. He plays everywhere. Here he is at right defensive end. You keep watching, he's playing left defensive end in a different stance. Then he's standing up in a two-point stance in a sub package. Then he's down in a left-handed stance over the center again. Then he comes out there in a nine technique, I call it, outside the tight end. And he beats the Falcons like they're not even there and turns this game around. Muhammad Wilkerson is a great player. Put him on your Pro Bowl ballot and pencil him in. The Jets are trying to match up to the Falcons' personnel. That's why they're late adjusting. In their own 20, it's Ryan with a run. Rogers sneaks through. There's a nice run for Atlanta. A game of nine for Jaquiz Rogers. I like the response of the Falcons. You criticize them. You and I both did for not being able to run the ball. They just stuck it in there in a goal line a minute ago. That time, a nice nine-yard run to start the drive. And jump into some no huddle, which Matt Ryan loves to do. Back to the run, and another loss, and it's Wilkerson. That highlight reel you just showed, add that to that. They run the same play back to back, and you're Peter Kahn. Somebody has to block back on oh. Muhammad oh. Wilkerson. Oh. But I think Wilkerson feels like he can beat Peter Kahn's all night long, and that's just what he did there. Off we go to the fourth quarter. And the Jets lead the Falcons by six on Monday Night Football. As many teams have hosted games this week and the next couple of weeks is the NFL. Teams of the American Cancer Society helping women make a crucial catch awareness of breast cancer. NFL.com slash pink. These breast cancer survivors honored on the field here between the third and the fourth quarter. Applaud, support the league's efforts. And breast cancer awareness. We begin the fourth quarter with Lisa Salters and John Gruden. Mike Tirico here in Atlanta. The Falcons start with third and two, down six. And Ryan throws complete. Roddy White able to hang on. The Jets' sideline wanted an offensive pass interference, and there is a flag thrown by the deep official. I think that's against Roddy White. Pass interference offense, number 84, 10-yard penalty. Repeat third down. The fundamentals that have made Roddy White great are lacking a little bit tonight because of his inactivity with this injury, but I don't know about that, Mike. I think pass interference calls should call themselves. They should jump off the screen at you. We need to let these players play. We've seen plenty more uh, egregious push-offs by receivers turn into pass interference. But it was called, and it's third and 12 for the Falcons. And that's a Rex Ryan special down. We're trying to confuse him here, huh? Looks like the jailbreak blitz here. <laughs> here they all come. And Ryan's putting it up for Julio Jones. Covered by Tremardi. Incomplete. No flag. Fourth down. Nobody would call that blitz except Rex Ryan. He is daring. Matt Ryan to throw the ball to his favorite receiver against all-out one-on-one coverage. Here they come, a jailbreak blitz. They're going to be one short. Matt Ryan knew it. And Antonio Cromart Marty wins round one. That takes a lot of guts to make that call with a six-point lead on the road in the fourth quarter. I admire that. Matt Bosher had a block punt early in the game that gave the Jets momentum. Gets this one off. Good hang time, 44 yards. Curley for the 38. Needs two blocks over here on this side. Got one. Curley brought down by Bosher again. 
And there is a flag thrown. The official who was about to throw the flag, I believe, for a horse collar tackle, got tripped up behind the play. So the flag came in late, but I think it's a horse collar on the Falcons that could take the Jets inside the Atlanta 25. Clearly. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, number five of the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, New York Jets, timeout. What a night it's been for the Jets special teams. And there you see Boschers made a couple of tackles. Inside the shoulder pads, easy call, add the 15. Jets up six and in great position. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by IBM. Let's build a smarter planet. Visit IBM.com slash smarter planet. LiftMaster. No other garage door opener opens your world like a LiftMaster. Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. And a crucial catch. Hear personal stories of impact at NFL.com slash pink. Home of so many hip-hop artists who've gotten their careers started here in Atlanta. John filmed this as he was out checking out the new music scene last night. Yeah. Perhaps not. First and ten for the Jets. The penalty brings him all the way to the 23. The Falcons netted just five yards on that punt exchange. Running up the middle. It is it is Ivory, I should say, leaping over more to the five-yard line. Chris Ivory explodes through the middle for a big game. That's a read option. Gino kept it in the first half. They're going to read Osi, and if he comes up the field, they're just going to give it to Ivory. Clearly a zone read. Ferguson seals it off in left tackle. It's a lot of offense that offensive coordinator Marty Morningwig makes it prepare for, and the zone read is one phase of it. Stephen Hill, bottom of the screen. On the give, Ivory again. That time, Warlow helps make the tackle on a gain of two. And, John, this is a crucial stop for the Falcons. They are down six. Roddy White and the offense have had their issues. There you see Arthur Blank and Thomas Dimitrov, the owner and GM, respectively. This team's trying to avoid a one and four start. After being the number one seed in the NFC last year and going down 13 would be a really big hole. And some confusion in the Falcons' defense. The substitutions by the Jets really confusing Atlanta. And I think the Jets are confused. They've got to hurry. Hurry there on the Wildcat. Play clock running down. Bilal Powell taking the direct snap. He does in time, and he takes it up the middle. He is a yard shy. It'll be third and goal from the one. Marty Warning wig. Used the speed break that time. He kept his Jets in the huddle, and they came running out together, and they lined up in a wildcat formation. They are trying to do everything possible to confuse the young linebacking core of the Falcons. Saw 62, Vladimir Dukas come in for the Jets. He reports as an eligible receiver. Sheldon Richardson, yep. number 91. The first round defensive tackle is lined up as a running back. What else can Marty Morningwig call? Will it work? They're going to roll it. Smith will throw it to the back of the end zone, and it is Winslow in for the touchdown. <laughs> Kellen Winslow keeps his feet in, and the Jets stunning the Falcons. They just ran a spider two wide banana with Sheldon Richardson as the fullback in the flat. Great job by Kellen Winslow getting both feet in on the sideline and what a story Winslow is in his own right. Had to sit out last year. He's had terrible knee ailments over the last couple years, but he delivers a huge blow to the Atlanta Falcons. Jets will go for one to take it to a 13-point lead with Nick Folk. Geno Smith, the four turnovers, messy game last week. Comes back with three touchdowns, no turnovers, and up 13 in Atlanta. Up 13 in the fourth quarter. They've won their last 73 when leading by eight or more in the fourth quarter. That's the longest streak since the mid-90s, the far run with the Packers. They did it for 86 games. In case you're wondering, the last time the Jets lost when they had a fourth quarter lead of eight or more, 1999 in Oakland 
some 36 year old kid named John Gruden was the head coach and the Raiders came back to win that day. It was a great day for me, Mike. <laughs> Rodgers. Another touchback. Couldn't get the clean catch. Let's go back to the nice catch and the touchdown by Winslow. Well, it's going to be a little corner route, but watch Sheldon Richardson in the flat control Will Moore. And they just throw the ball right over the safety's head for a touchdown. Great execution. Very good play calling, and Kellen Winslow, he knows where that sideline is. So now John flips to the Falcons in a 13-point hole, and Roddy White not out there. His hamstring is bothering him. His return is questionable. Remember, he had the ankle injury. He's been battling since all preseason. Injured on that last drive. So Matt Ryan doesn't have one of his reliable weapons. First down throw, it's Gonzalez. For the first down, Tony to the 32. We'll see if they go no huddle here. Absolutely, and that's that Y stick route that Tony Gonzalez talked to us about yesterday. Five yard out breaking pattern and Nice work after the catch, but Matt Ryan's going to be in a two-minute drill for the rest of this game. Hey, John, I just saw Jason Snelling, the other running back, head off to the locker room for Atlanta. They're losing players on this side. Ball's deflected in the air, and it is nearly intercepted by Richardson. You know, when Matt Ryan plays quarterback against you, the ball's coming out in 2.0 seconds or less, and the Jets know it. The best way to counter Matt Ryan is by batting passes down. We've all seen J.J. Watt of the Texan, Texans, the prominence that he's had, batting passes down. But against a quick pass offense, you've got to bat passes down, and that's a great job by Richardson. 52. 52. Hey. On second down, pressure off the edge from Wilkerson, caught by Julio Jones, who's pulled down by Antonio Allen, but he still has the first down at the 43-yard line. Matt Ryan is scary in these situations. That time he had a bunch formation, nobody was open, and he got all the way to the back sign and found Julio Jones. Great work. John, in the absence of Roddy White with the hamstring injury, Drew Davis, second-year man out of Oregon. has zero career catches. Ryan throws complete. Jacques Rogers spins out of a tackle. Not going to get away from Demario Davis. Jet injured back behind the play as they were trying to close in on Ryan. So like Antoine Barnes, right defensive end. Mm -hmm. Speed edge rusher. Went off the edge and went down low to get him. Injury timeout. Barnes was helped off not putting much weight on his leg as he was trying to turn the corner got tangled with the offensive lineman and his knee just gave out on him second and five for Atlanta down 13 Ryan a lot of pressure from his right able to get rid of it to Jones fully over catch and another first down reception number seven for Jones but limited yardage for Julio tonight and Matt Ryan still has to be very careful with this Jet defense, recognizing the coverage and where these blitzes are coming from. Express, express. Jones just 53 yards on seven receptions. Ryan and Harry Douglas turns it upfield on walls. Taking out of bounds by his former teammates. Teammate, a couple yards shy of the first down. That's the first time Douglas has caught a ball tonight. I never like playing Matt Ryan in a two minute drill Mike because when you give him four downs it's almost impossible to stop him and that's just where he is right now the field goal is not an option so Matt Ryan is going to continue to try to avoid the sacks and he knows Rex Ryan is probably not going to take any real risks with a 13 point lead he's got to be patient. It's on Smith in there at the back for second and three. Well, play action. Ryan loading up for Jones. Julio couldn't hold on. Cromartie takes it away from him as they go to the ground. Julio couldn't hold on. 
blitz situation. It's the second time Julio Jones has had an opportunity in one on one coverage to beat Antonio Cromartie. That's where long arms pays off if you're Antonio Cromartie. It's not common that you find a corner with that wingspan. And I like that they let him play. And the timing was very, very close on it. Cromartie almost waiting. They teach receivers late hands. Don't show your hands. Give the DB a read on when it's coming. And Cromartie used those long arms to bring him down. And Julio's out of the game. There's a lot of inexperienced Falcons in here now. Yeah, Drew Davis, Kevin Cohen in there. Ryan throws and is caught by Kevin Cohn, the third-year man out at Georgia Tech, mostly only a special teamer with his first catch. Julio is still out of the game, but what a big play by Cohn, crossing face on a slant pattern against one-on-one -on -one coverage. And it's the first career reception for Cohn, third year with the Falcons. Down 13 and trying to come back without your two best receivers. Ryan goes to the tight end. Gonzalez stopped at the 20-yard line, gain of seven. And I don't know if Julio's shaking up here. It looks like he's coming back yep. in the football game. They're going to stay with who they have. Terry Rubisky, former NFL head coach, the wide receiver coach here. Tell him to hang on for a moment. Go to the run, and a good run inside, and bouncing out again is Rodgers for his second rushing touchdown. Great job by Matt Ryan being patient. He read the deployment of the Jet secondary. He saw the two-deep safety look, and he gave Jaquiz Rodgers a draw play. Safeties are very deep. It's a soft box. Falcons have a man for a man, and... Missed tackles in the secondary. That one by DeWan Landry is costly, but Matt Ryan did a great job being patient throughout that drive. He just put Atlanta right back in this game. He saw 19, Drew Davis. Let's give him credit, John, for coming down and blocking and getting in the way of one of the would-be tacklers as well. Extra points important. Ryan adds it. Six-point game. You can go figure. Roddy White and Julio Jones are on the bench, and you're trying to come back. You haven't run it worth a darn all night. And Jaquiz Rogers takes it in and tightens it up to a six-point game. There's a lot of question who's going to be the quarterback for the Jets this year. Mark Sanchez played pretty well in preseason with that inexplicable third preseason game when Geno Smith struggled with three interceptions against the Giants. And Sanchez came in in the fourth quarter behind an offensive line. Two of the guys cut, two of the rookies. Gets hurt, injures the shoulder, on injured reserve, designated to return. Perhaps surgery in the future. Geno Smith has had the rookie ups and downs. It's been an ups night tonight. Returned by Clyde Gates. He's shy of the 20-yard line. And now John Geno Smith, who has played well with a very diverse package of offense, a smorgasbord of selections from Marty Morningwig, now has to try to protect the lead with eight minutes on the road. And if you're the Atlanta Falcons, you have to be alert for the zone read. The zone read hurt him bad in the last possession. I'd be surprised if the New York Jets don't go that route again. But Marty Morningwig has had him off balance with the Wildcat in the zone read. I'd expect to see that on an early down again. And the Falcons reacting to the Jets personnel just made a substitution. And they're running around here on defense after a kickoff on first and ten. From the 19, Bilal Powell runs left. He hits his shoulder down. Look at the way he runs, John, to the 24-yard line. You know, Bilal Powell, nobody knows about him. He's deceptive. He's bigger than you think he is. He's quicker than you think he is. He's stronger than you think he is. And he's proved that again tonight. He's one of the top rushers in the AFC. Get to know him. Young man who emerged from street gangs in Florida was shot, stabbed in that area, a very difficult area. Running back coach along the way as his time at Louisville helped get that young man back in position to succeed on the football field. Second and four, Smith, look out! Human Yura coming around the corner gets to him. 
Osa Yumanura just beat the Pro Bowl to Brickishaw Ferguson bad. You want to see your prize free agent acquisition deliver in a critical situation, and OC Human Europe goes to work on the Brickshaw Ferguson in a critical time. That's two plays for the ex New York Giant. Two sacks for the night, four on the year, and a marker down. The Jets had too many players in the huddle again. Short Five yard penalty, third down. Substitution. Infraction for the second time. Jets had that earlier in the first half. And I think this game's going to come down to the Ryans. Matt Ryan against Rex Ryan. At crunch time, you're in for a thrilling finish. Third and 17, screen time. There it goes, Curley. As some blockers and the Falcons were playing that defense, knowing what was coming. Able to stop the power of Warlow on the tackle, and the Jets go three and out. Pass rush has awakened here in Atlanta. Two by O.C. Human Euro, one by Corey Peters. Still a lot of time. Ryan Quigley. Good kick. 50 yards. Harry Douglas from the 30. Turns it up and returns it seven yards as Nick Ballor makes his second special teams tackle of the night. OC Human Europe coming up with a couple of big second half drive stoppers. Off the edge and the sack. Gets the ball back for Matt Ryan in the Atlanta offense. Down six with under six left. Monday night, we go to San Diego to see Andrew Luck, who has led the Colts to four and one and atop the AFC South. Take on Phillip Rivers and the Chargers, who have played some good games, except for last night. Very disappointing performance in Oakland. So it's the Colts and the Chargers next Monday night, 825 Eastern from San Diego. 541 in the fourth. And the man who is so cool and so good in these situations, down six, Matt Ryan from his own 37. Taking a shot to Julio Jones again. Flag down and Jones. No signal from the officials if it's a clean catch. They don't even bother. They're going to come with a pass interference call on Jones. Pass interference on the Falcons. It's the third time. In a critical moment, pass interference, offense number 11. 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. That the Jets have dared Matt Ryan to throw the ball to his best receiver. Let's see the release to the outside. See if Julio pushes off. I still would like to see these guys get the play. That, that, that pass interference should jump off the screen at you. I, I just don't like that at all. You do see the fully extended arm, but again, there's been a lot of hand, a lot more hand fighting that goes uncalled. So that takes him back 10. Let's point out on this side, Jason Snelling was taken to the locker room during the last drive to have a concussion test. Ryan first and 20, going to go right back that way at Jones again. Another flag down and a one hand tremendous grab by Jones. What a play. That's a heavyweight fight. Julio Jones says, you don't want to do that to me all night. Eventually, I'll get you. Pass interference. Number 31 defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Left-handed. What a catch. Wow. 46 on the game. Joe Howley is reported as an eligible tight end. He is the extra offensive tackle, but what a battle between Julio and Antonio Cromartie, and that's the play of the night. <laughs> Falcons at the Jets 27. Ryan again, shot for the end zone, and Douglas incomplete, broken up by the ex-Falcon, Darren Walls. Rex Ryan, excuse me, Mike, he expects a lot from these corners. 
D. Milner, first rounder, is not here because of an injury. They're leaning on an ex-practice squad player, Darren Waltz, to deliver in a one-on-one -on -one situation. That time he does a great job flipping his head, making a play. But again, what's been part of the Jets of the Atlanta, excuse me, red zone struggles or struggles this year? Didn't have all their complete offensive players at max performance. Roddy White injured throughout the year on the bench with a hamstring injury for this drive. Ryan gets it to Jaquiz Rogers. Inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. We mentioned Matt Ryan, his nickname Matty Ice. It's because in the fourth quarter, since he's come in the league, he has been the best at this. 22 game-winning drives. He has the most in the league. Fourth quarter overtime. Peyton Manning, who added to that, is second to Matt Ryan on that list. And the big gun is back in the game. Julio is exhausted. Roddy White is not here tonight. Julio's had to do a lot himself, and he can't get away from Antonio Cromartie. Everywhere he goes, Cromartie's with him. This is third and one. The fullback DeMarco is in front of Rodgers. They'll throw. Ryan scanning. Has to put it up for grabs, and it is incomplete. Going towards Gonzalez, but again, John, your guy, Muhammad Wilkerson, with the pressure on the quarterback. A lot of Jets in this front that I really like, and it starts with Wilkerson, but Ryan got away with one there. They're asking Jaquiz Rogers to cut Muhammad Wilkerson. That ball better come out in a hurry. And John, again, go back to the first half. Atlanta chooses not to get the field goal at the end of the half. Otherwise, we'd be in a three-point game here, and they'd be kicking a field goal to tie. Instead, fourth and one, they're going. Jets have made a lot of substitutions on defense here. Jailbreak blitz. And Ryan's going to throw it, and it is caught by Gonzalez. Where else do you go at a moment like that? First down, Atlanta. That's that route he's been running forever. Why stick? He can beat anybody at any time with that pattern. And on fourth and one, Gonzalez delivers for Atlanta. 12 catches last week, 10 this week, approaching 100 yards again. In the red zone, the Falcons trying to take the lead. And again, they'll run it, and this time it's Anton Smith taking it inside the 10 to the 6-yard line. You see what Matt Ryan is doing. He's in Rex Ryan's head. He's using all these dummy snap counts to gather information. And when he sees these safeties deep, he's going to hand the ball to whatever back he has. Rodgers, Snelling, Smith, they're all able to make yards against that loose jet defense. And it's all because Matt Ryan is complete control of this Falcon offense. Second and two. Quickly out to Harry Douglas who gets popped on the spot by Walls. That's as good as it gets. You see these one-step hitches against blitz coverage. You tell your corner... Go attack that outside leg and run right through him. What a play by Walls. That's big time. Third and three again, four down territory. Here they come. At Ryan. He gets rid of it. Incomplete for Jones. <laughs> Jets, they bring all these Jets on one side of the formation, and they fall out of there on the other side. And Dennis Thurman, the defensive coordinator, and Rex Ryan are going to take Tony Gonzalez out of the game in this situation. I'd be surprised if Tony Gonzalez doesn't get a double vice coverage and they'll force the ball to go someplace else. Now, they did that last last time in the first half down here, and they were called for pass interference. Again, fourth and three. First down awaits just inside the five. They're vicing Gonzalez. Ryan glances that way. That comes incomplete, and there is a flag thrown in the end zone. Flag in the end zone, again on the coverage on Gonzalez. And it's a defensive hold, it appears. Well, they double viced him. 
Prior to the pass, holding number 56 defense. After distance to the goal, automatic first down. They are not going to let Gonzalez catch a pass. Look at the double vice. I don't see that call at all. Well, he said 56, and 56 was the linebacker, Davis, who was out on Jaquiz Rogers, the intended receiver. So if he had the number right, it wasn't a hold on Gonzalez. It would be on the intended pass catcher. So first and goal, 207 left. Ryan on the give, up the middle. Rogers spun around almost by a face mask, it seemed. He's brought down with a one-yard gain, and we get to the two-minute warning. They've been here against the Patriots. They've been here against the Saints. Can the Falcons get it in the end zone when it matters most and get a victory? Uh, guys, Scott Van Pelt, Steve Levy back in the studio. They are watching the baseball playoff drama. They'll have all the highlights of a very busy day. We also have the latest around the NFL with Adam Schefter and the GMC postgame right here with Susie Culver, Ray Lewis, Steve Young, and Trent Dilfer. A lot going on. Two-minute warning, each team multiple timeouts. Falcons have it first or second and goal at the three after a flag thrown on fourth down for pass interference on the Jets. Second and goal, Ryan scanning, throwing end zone, it is, touchdown, Toilolo! Levine Toilolo with the touchdown. You're Mike Smith, you gotta be proud of your rookie class. They benefit from the penalty, let's not forget that, but Toilolo on the right side of your screen runs a corner route against DeLon Landry and you can't throw the ball much better than that. And it sure helps when you have a six foot eight inch target that can go get it. Two incredible touchdown drives late in the fourth quarter by Matt Ryan. That's why they call him Matty Ice. The extra point is to take the lead. Matt Bryant out of the Matt Bosher hold. And the Falcons take the lead by one. Second touchdown for Levine Toilolo. Chase Kaufman, the backup to Tony Gonzalez, got hurt in practice on Saturday. Toilolo seeing action. That big red zone target. He's learning from Tony Gonzalez. So, of course, he's going to give you the slam dunk to take the lead. Falcons lead by one. Again, there was a fourth down pass interference called on the Jets, and there was a play in the two minute warning. We're going to get you back to that play when it was called by Bill Levy. He said 56. That was the defender, Demario Davis, on Jaquiz Rogers, and he said it was holding. That was the call. And there is the hold and the grab there that was flagged. Now, the flag came from the back, and the official who was in the camera shot of this action with Harris, part of the double team on Gonzalez. Is either one a pass interference in that situation? Called as such. Now the Jets have Antonio Cromarty back deep, trying to get a spark on the return. He won't bring it out, and the Jets will start from the 12. Three timeouts left. You need a field goal. Running the ball is not out of the question. And Geno Smith make a play and this jet pass this jet offensive line has got to protect better they've given up three sacks here in the second half at minimum you probably need 40 yards to give Folk a realistic chance he's made a 56 yard on the 20 Smith first throw underneath it is caught on the move good spin and turn Stephen Hill gets the first down to the 33 yard line and Geno Smith is going to get some help from the sidelines for Marty Morningwig, but he is clearly jumping the ball in a two-minute drill. And don't forget running the football against these loose Falcon zones. 32, pressure comes late. A slant caught by Curley to the 45-yard line. Johnny's got a huge arm, and he loves to throw that slant. He loves the slant pattern, especially out of the shotgun. He can catch and release. That's what he did at West Virginia. 
You better be careful blitzing Geno Smith. He's hurt you a couple times already. We're only about 17 yards out of realistic field goal try range. Smith throws again. Another one. It's caught. Spinning and turning his hill at the 45. Now the Jets have a minute left, and they can back off the gas pedal just a little bit here. They only need about 10 more yards. That time Atlanta rushed just three. They went with a maximum zone. Now they're back to their four-man rush. Somebody needs to deliver the knockout pass rush. Smith can't take a sack. Trying to run away from you and Yura and get to the sideline. He does, and he gets about seven yards. He's marked out at the 38. From there, a field goal is 56 yards. So they're right in folks' range here with 37 seconds left. Nice field by Geno Smith. Aborting the play, and he does an excellent job finding the sideline and stopping the clock. Look for Mike Nolan, the defensive coordinator of the Falcons, to come with some kind of blitz. They must knock the Jets out of field goal position. Nick Fole has already iced people this year. The Tampa Bay. Remember, Geno led an improbable late comeback against the Buccaneers in the opener. John, you said they could still run here. They do. Bilal Powell squirts through. It's to the 35, and the Jets will take a timeout with 31 seconds left. So from here, a field goal attempt would be about 53 yards. Nick Folk has closed games, as you mentioned, not just this year, but he has multiple game-winning field goals with the Jets. Five of them. And you see Geno Smith over there with Marty Morningwig. What a night for the two of them. They have to expect blitz here, and a lot of it. I would expect a quick pattern, a slant pattern, perhaps a double move. Atlanta is going to blitz and try to knock the Jets out of field goal position. The conditions are perfect for Nick Folk to kick a long-range field goal. Pressure is critical here by the Falcon defense. Again, turnovers have been the story all year, and mistakes like taking a sack when you can't and turning it over. And Smith has not turned it over tonight. Second and six. The run, the slant is caught, and Clyde Gates climbs for three yards to the 31, and Rex Ryan stops it at 25 seconds. It's a great call by Marty Morningway. He expected the blitz. He had the quick screen called. And if Clyde Gates is Santonio Holmes right there, that's a touchdown. Gates does a nice job backing off Trufant, but if he runs through this ball, he's got a chance to do something with it. Gates fell down on his own right there. Curley's got to be careful about blocking too early as well. All right, John. From here, the field goal's 48. That's not a gimme, not a guarantee, but you know he's got the leg. It's third and three. How aggressive do you get with your play call here? I'm going to do the same thing I just did. I'm going to throw a quick pass. It's either there or it's not. And I'm going to give Nick Foltz a chance to ice this game. If you're on the Atlanta side and Mike Smith, if they don't get the first down, you've got a timeout. You've got to use it to give yourself a little window just in case they make the field goal. He maybe give Matt Ryan a play or two. Atlanta's going to blitz. And Trufant at the top of the screen is one-on-one -on -one with Stephen Hill. I'd go right there. Third and three. They go to the run. Powell makes the first man. He gets a big first down at the 26-yard line. Bilal Powell. Now Rex Ryan's going to let it run here. With 14 seconds left, when they kick the field goal, they're running all the way down now. Let's see. Rex is right over by the official and has told him when he wants timeout. As the clock runs down, they run it down to three, and we'll take it here. Jonathan Babineau has to be sick, Mike. He runs through. No one touched him. This should be a five-yard loss, and the Jets dodge a bullet. Watch Babineau on the left side of your screen. He's untouched. Wow. That's going to be a five-yard loss and a 52-yard field goal, but what a run by Bilal Powell, Mike. And it's interesting. Rick Ryan will let it run down to three seconds. It is first down. If there's a bad snap, you can often just throw it away and give yourself another chance at the field goal, but they don't give themselves a window to do that with three seconds left. Now, Mike Smith has two timeouts. Will he use one right before Folk is about to kick? What a drive by Geno Smith. 
Nick Folk has made every kick he's attempted this year. Mike Smith is not by the official. Doesn't look like he's going to call timeout. For 43. And the win. On line. And it is good. And the Jets beat the Falcons. Geno Smith comes to Atlanta. It shocks the Falcons. Matt Ryan has never lost back-to-back -back games in his own stadium until tonight. Rex and Matt, the Ryans, with an embrace. And these two guys who are on the same staff in Baltimore, good friends, and stay in touch with a hug. Nick Folk has won a game with a kick for the sixth time. And you see Ben Week of the Jets special teams coach. Their special teams were terrific, starting with a block punt and ending with a game-winning field goal that puts the Jets at three and two. On a week when their whole division lost, the Patriots, the Dolphins, the Bills. Guess who's a game out of first? J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Or maybe it's G-E-N-O, Gino, <laughs> Gino. Geno Smith, after the mess of turnovers, has a clean game. And Matt Ryan did the Matty Ice deal. He walked his guys back down the field to give him the lead. But it's a loss. And Lisa Salters talks with the winning quarterback, the Jets rookie, hey, Geno on. Smith. Thank you, Mike. Geno, what did you even say to yourself just internally before you even started that last drive? I'll just go out there, focus on my reads, uh, stick to my fundamentals. You know, I've been in this situation time and time again. And, um, you know, it's just great to come out of here with a team victory, man. We bounced back from a tough one last week, and uh, we got to put it behind us and prepare for a tough Steelers team. You mentioned last week and all the turnovers, no turnovers tonight. What was the difference for you? What felt different? You know, it's a mindset, and uh, I made it my duty to come out here and uh, not put the ball on the ground, not put my team in jeopardy. And, uh, you know, it came down to a, a last-second drive against a tough Atlanta team on the road. But, uh, you know, we stood up tonight, and, um, you know, that just speaks volumes about this team's character told me that you believe that you are ready to be the quarterback of this Jets team. What did that last drive, this win tonight here, what does that do for your confidence? You know, my confidence is always sky high. Um, you know, nothing can bring me down. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to continue to work. And uh, we're putting this one behind us, man. We get on that bus, we enjoy it for a little bit, and then we get back to work. All right, thanks. Congratulations, you know. Thank you. Mike. How about some Monday Night Football history, Lisa? Geno Smith, just the second rookie quarterback in the 44-year history of Monday Night Football to go on the road and get a win. The other one was Ed Roberts, who beat Danny White and the Cowboys in a replacement game. They made the movie The Replacements out of that. What an incredible story here tonight. The turnover machine got turned off, and the Jets go on the road. And the Atlanta Falcons, the number one seed last year, 13-3. They already have more losses this year than they did all of last the Jets win 30 to 28 with John Gruden, Lisa Salters, Mike Tirico. Thanks to our great crew. So long from Atlanta. Full recap of the game from here in the studio, starting now on SportsCenter.